Awesome. Hey, let's just get into this. Um, you know, it's been a little bit of time since I posted a podcast episode, right? So a lot of the a lot of what's happening in the world is pretty crazy. Um, a lot of things have happened in the last few months, and so I, I've just noticed a trend within uh, the Christian world. So when I'm talking through these podcast episodes, you have to understand. If you're listening and you don't really associate as a Christian, as a believer, uh, that's perfectly okay. I'm glad that you're listening to the podcast, honestly. Um, This is directed mostly towards Christian leaders. So, you know what? There's going to be some harsh truths in here, all right? There's going to be some some things that I say that might, uh, you know, rub you the wrong way sometimes, but that's okay because as believers, we have to be okay with correction and we also have to be okay with hard conversations. And so this is just something that I have... Uh, I've noticed in the last couple months of everything that's happening in the world, decisions being made, um, silence, not silence, people saying different things. And, uh, you know, uh, this, this post specifically, this podcast episode is coming from a conversation I had on Instagram with somebody. And, um, basically what they said to me was, Hey Spencer, cause I posted something. I mean, on Instagram, I'm, um, you know, I'm vocal. I'll say what I believe. And uh, somebody posted and replied back to me and said, you know, I, I think that we should just be able to respect other people's opinions. And you know what? I, I read that and I thought about it and I was like, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, respect other people's opinions. It's a nice saying. It's fluffy. It feels good. It makes you feel good to say it and not think about it. But the more that I thought about that statement, the more that I disagreed with it, okay? The more that I'm like, no, I don't think that we should have to respect other people's opinions. And that's the premise of today's episodes episode of, hey, we don't necessarily have to respect other people's opinions. Now, I'm gonna explain it in the next 10 minutes here. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of dive into why I believe that. Um, you know, I, I really don't think that we need to respect everybody's opinions. Frankly, why? Um, Because opinions are separate from people. All right. And that, that may not be true for a lot of Christians, but what we have to get to is a place of saying, okay, people have opinions. People are not their opinions. Too many Christians identify with their opinions. Too many believers are they, they have their thoughts and their beliefs. And what happens is that is the makeup of their entire identity versus Christ. As a Christian, we're born again, Christians. We identify with Christ. That is what our identity is in. But what's happened is I think a lot of times we've created idols out of our ideologies. And that's easy to do because, you know, you're talking about every day, you're talking about what you believe, your opinions, how, how you feel about specific matters. And when that happens, it's easy to create an idol out of our ideologies Um, and opinions will start to become our identity. And so when that happens, okay, now follow me here. When that happens, when your opinion is your identity and somebody disagrees with your opinion, now all of a sudden to you, that feels like an attack on you personally. When that's not the case, okay, if somebody disagrees with you, it doesn't mean they're fundamentally attacking you as a person. But what do we see time and time again in the world is if you don't believe this, what I believe, then you are attacking me or you are oppressing me or that you are doing something harmful to me. When that's that's not the case at all. What When you're attacking an opinion, when I don't respect other people's opinions, all I'm doing is I'm attacking a thought structure. I'm attacking a mindset. I'm attack, attacking a, a line of logical thinking for you that I think is inaccurate. Okay. So this whole, this whole concept of if you think this, then you're attacking me. That's not accurate. It's not true. It's just people have had their um, identities in things that aren't unhealthy, i.e. politics, um, opinions, feelings. When you put your identity in that and somebody disagrees with it, then obviously you're going to feel like they're attacking you, but it's backwards. It's not the case. Uh, You know, I hope that people don't, respect all of my opinions if I have stupid opinions. Okay. Like that's, it sounds harsh, but like opinions can be wrong. And if I have a wrong opinion, I hope that somebody corrects me, right? If I were to sit here and say the earth is flat, right? Hashtag Kyrie Irving. If, if I'm insane here, I'm like the earth is flat. I hope that 
people aren't like, well, let's just respect his opinion and let him think that. No, because it's wrong. Okay. It's wrong. So don't let me think that if I were to come to you and say, Star Wars episode seven through nine is the best of all the Star Wars movies. I hope that you wouldn't respect that because it's wrong. If I were to come to you and say Top Gun 2 was a terrible movie, I hope that you don't respect my opinion. I hope that you combat it and say, no, I don't think that's true. And here's why. Opinions can be wrong. And I I just hope that we can come to a place to understand that when people are opposing opinions or opposing what you think, sometimes it's for academic purposes and it's to get to the bottom line of what the truth actually is. In today's culture, it's become totally inappropriate to, to say that something is wrong and that's not okay. It's not okay. Things are wrong. Things are right and things are wrong. It's not your truth. It's not my truth. It's, hey, there's a truth. Okay. And we have to get to the bottom of line of what that truth actually is. And the only way to do that is to have tough conversations with people that we disagree with. Right? Proverbs 20, 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another. How does that happen? Friction. Sometimes it requires friction and conversations and disagreements to understand and get to the bottom line of what the truth actually is. So a big inventory that we can take as believers today is, are we willing to have conversations with somebody that disagrees with us? Are you willing? I've seen this a lot, at least recently, where it's, hey, I'm believing this. And then anybody that says, hey, I disagree, you're not even willing to have a conversation with the person. It's just like, oh, you just label them as something. You label them as hateful and blah, 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 blah. And I don't want to talk to you because uh, you don't respect me and this and that. No, if you believe something, you should be able to defend it. And that's, that's a fact. If you believe something with all of your heart and you'll stand on it, then you should be able to defend it. Anything that I believe, if you come to me and say, hey, I disagree with you. I don't believe that. I say, okay, let's have a conversation. Let's, let's talk about it. Why don't you believe it? Because I feel fully confident in defending it. And so um, some inventory that we might be able to take today is if you're not willing to have a conversation with somebody that disagrees with you about opinions or beliefs or whatever it may be, either maybe you're a little insecure and because you can't defend what you believe, which is a pretty big red flag because you should be able to know why you believe what you believe. And so if you can't defend what you believe, you need, you really need to investigate and find out why do I believe this so that you can stand on, um, you can stand on ground that you're able to argue with and defend and debate and talk about. Um, another thing is, or the more dangerous one is we're just idolizing our feelings and thoughts and saying that the truth, the objective truth is with me or the subjective truth, which is more dangerous, but the truth is with me and anything else isn't truth. And if you expect, that's even a bigger red flag to me, because if you expect everybody to agree with you on everything and never give pushback or critique to what you're saying, um, you kind of sound like a dictator, you know, like, like, Hey, I believe this, this is true. Nobody else can say otherwise, right? That's, that's kind of like you sound like you're a dictator and <laughs> like you, you can't expect everybody to agree with you. You're putting yourself in the position of God to say, hey, I have the truth. I have the objective real- truth and all the reality um, is what I believe it is. You're putting yourself in a position of being God and that's the biggest red flag there is. And so number one is we have to be able to like talk about disagreements, okay? Have an open mind be able to talk about why you believe what you believe. If you can't do that, then you're either um, insecure about what you believe or you just uh, are a little prideful and you need to take care of that, okay? Tough love. It's all right. We're going on. Um, And we have to understand the world that we live in, right? So why is there such a knowledge gap? Why is there two people that say that they believe in the same thing, right? And they are total polar opposites, Well, it's because of our access to information today. Okay, so Gen Z is the first generation that grew up with the internet. Totally, right? I mean, my generation, uh, the millennials, we grew up and we grew up and it was introduced technology, like really started iPhones, you know, internet. That kind of started at a young age. But we, Gen Z is like the first generation that like three-year-olds and four-year-olds had iPads and like they could just search anything, you know, right there. And, you know, that presents issues in my opinion, with some things like critical thinking, but we can say that for another TikTok or TikTok, (laughs) a podcast episode. Um, But Gen Z is the first generation that has total access to everything. Like they could go on TikTok 
and look at Ukraine being bombed across the world and just see videos, right? That's insane. And it's not, nobody thinks about it that much, but it is a pretty big deal when it comes to the grand scheme of history and, and how people think and process information. And so the danger of that is you can justify anything with the internet. Any belief that you have, you can go online and you can justify it. Right. Uh, let's take, I love coffee. I drink coffee all the time. I could go online and I could type in, why is coffee bad for you? And I would have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles and sources and websites. This is why coffee is bad for you. This is why coffee is bad for you. I could go, why is coffee good for you? Hundreds of articles. This is why coffee is good for you. This is why coffee will make you live longer. This is why it's good for your diet, blah, blah, blah. You know, and there's everything on the internet. So you can go and you can justify whatever opinion you have based on what you search on the internet. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do a, a mystery here, right? So there's a food group that the internet says, okay, I looked this up on the internet. So you know, it's true on the internet. This type of food will give you heartburn, could give you stomach issues, could give you bloating, high blood sugar and indigestion. Now, if I just said, hey, there's there's something that you can eat and these are the possible, you know, reactions to that. Do you want to eat it? You're probably like, no, I'm good. I, I don't really want to eat that. That doesn't sound like a fun time. That food is fruit. That that food is fruit. That's the that's the side effects or whatever of what's possible eating fruit. So that's what I'm saying. Like you can, if you can see, if you can look up why fruit isn't good for you on the internet, you can look, you can find whatever you want on there and whatever info you're trying to find to justify what you want to do, you'll find it. So we have a generation that is idolizing their ideologies and they're living by feeling and emotion and, and, and making their opinion, their Lord. And what they're doing is they're going online to justify what they think is true. And they find those justifications and that just reinforces a bad thinking pattern or a wrong thinking pattern or straight up lies and, and things that aren't true and what they believe. And so Christians are choosing what they want to believe then they're going to the internet to justify it. And then they're going to scripture to find some one or two or three verses that make sense to what they want to believe. That's not how it works, people. That's not, that's not how it works. We should take everything that we understand directly from scripture and shape our worldview from this. You know, I, I was, I'm thankful because when I got saved, all I heard, all that people taught me was, hey, you just need to read your Bible. Just read your Bible. And I wasn't listening to sermons. I wasn't on YouTube. I wasn't looking at, you know, well, TikTok wasn't around, uh, but I wasn't on Instagram. I wasn't pre, uh, lis listening to sermons online. I just read my Bible. And guess what? It made it a lot easier to understand what was true and what wasn't. It made it a lot clearer to me to look at, okay, I'm submitted to God. I'm submitted to his truth. And that is what my worldview is going to be. But what now we have it flipped upside down on its head. Where it's like, hey, I want to believe this. Let me go and justify that. And you can justify it. And the danger with that as well is these social media platforms and Google and all these, they have algorithms. They know what you be that what you want to hear and they'll feed you that, right? You look at that political, conservative, Democrat, you look at it with anything, you know, you look at a, a cooking TikTok once and now all of a sudden it's all cooking TikToks, right? Because they know what you want to see. So if you're going to somewhere that isn't truth, and you're trying to, f and you're uh, now digesting that, it's going to keep feeding you that. So that's how people get into these holes of how do you even believe that? How do you not read your Bible? Well, it's like, no, I do read my Bible, but I read it from a lens of justifying what I want it to, to say. Okay. There's a difference there. Um, so that's why, in my opinion, we don't have to respect other people's opinions. You don't have to. It's a cop out. When you say, oh, we should just, you know, we should just respect other people's opinions because we don't want to offend them and we don't want to upset them and we need to show the love of Jesus to everybody inclusive. Listen, in my opinion, that is the biggest cop out and it's called tolerance. And what tolerance is, is tolerance is cowardice dis uh, disguised as love. Tolerance is cowardice disguised as love. We tolerate things because we don't want to have hard conversations. We tolerate things because we're like, ooh, what's going to happen if I say you're wrong and you get mad at me and you're not my friend anymore? 
you know, and that's, that's the, that's the trouble that we get into. And so, um, a lot of times what we can think is, man, I'm worried about, I'm worried about saying something because what if people don't like Christianity as a result? I'm afraid of saying something because what if it turns people off from Jesus and God and they don't want to come to church anymore? And it's funny because um, God never called us to the outcome. He only called us to the act. He called us to preach the gospel, right? So it's our job to speak truth. It's God's job to change hearts. And what happens is we put ourselves in the place of God when we're when we're uh, when we say, "Oh well, I don't want to do this because I don't know if they'd be you know turned off by Christianity." He calls to the act, not the outcome. So if we speak truth and people are mad about it and they walk away from church, that's still what you're doing. Like you're still doing what God has called you to do, which is preach the good news. It's good news. You can say something in a loving way, but love also is truth. So if you speak truth in a loving way, you're not responsible for the outcome. Okay, it's as simple as that. But people use this respect other people's opinions. Ooh, I don't want to. I don't want to ruffle the feathers. Why? Scripture tells us that it's going to get ruffled anyways. Scripture is going to tells us that the the world is going to reject us. So it's our job to speak truth in a loving way, and then whatever happens as a result, it's not up to you. It's not up to me. But don't stop. We we just need more Christians to really rise up and speak out on what truth is and what they believe, right? We, we just need more people to say, hey, I believe this. I think this is true and this is why. Um, and sometimes you're going to say something unpopular and people are going to call you names. People are going to call you a bigot. People are going to call you hateful. People are going to call you unloving. But guess what? Um, we have to be able to deal with that if we're going to live in accordance with God's will. And as long as we are loving, we can't control how other people respond. All right. Um, too many people want to play God. Too many people want to play God and say, well, I think this is true. And listen, there are there are things that I read in scripture that I'm like, oh, I don't know why God made it that way. I really don't. But one thing I do know is my six months reading scripture when I first got saved laid the foundation and I understood God's character more. And, it, and as the Holy Spirit worked in me, I was okay with the questions I couldn't answer. It's like when I was young, you know, my parents was like, oh, like, you know, when you're eight years old and you don't understand anything and you're like, I want to go play outside, right? But back when people played outside, everybody <laughs> plays Minecraft and video games now, but when we're outside playing and my mom's like, no, you got to come in, it's getting dark. I'm like, who cares? It's dark. Who cares? You know, but my mom understood that there, the dark came with some things. And so that's a healthy boundary to put in my, in my life, even though I didn't understand why. Right, uh, there was disciplines that I had as a kid that I didn't understand why, but my parents obviously knew what was best for me. So we have to take that same, that same mindset into our relationship with God. Hey, sometimes you don't have all the answers. You don't know why some things are the way that they are, why God chose to make some things the way that he did. But guess what? He, we have to trust him as our heavenly father that he does know best that he is the God of the universe, that he does see beginning and end. And because of that, he is able to lay everything out in a way that is perfect in what he is calling us to do. So trust God. If you have questions and you're like, man, I wish this wasn't the way that it is. Read the Bible, learn about God's character and the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, your heart will begin to change. So um, that's it for today. Hey, we're back. The future is now is back. So make sure that you are tuning in. I'm excited to, to post more episodes to see, uh, you know, what what comes from this in the in the future. Uh, I did post a little thank you and a, and a um, recap uh, the last episode before this. So make sure you check that out. Uh, make sure you're sharing this with your friends. Um, it means the world to me. Everybody that listens all across the world, it's crazy. It's so it blows my mind. So uh, make sure that you guys are doing that. Make sure that you guys are signing up for Theos U using the code FUTURE10 and make sure that you also are inquiring if you want um, any information regarding um, the the financial inventory of your life and building that up. Make sure you follow that link and set that appointment as well. So um, thank you guys so much for listening or watching The Future Is Now podcast. We'll see you next time. Love you guys.